Hi, it's Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I thought I'd do a quick reading update. So this is the these are the books that I've been reading since I last recorded a couple of weeks ago. And I think I was doing, I think I did a Women in Translation TBR and on that was Violets by Kyung Suk Shin, translated by Anton Herr. And I read this and Annie and I just did a podcast episode on it. So that will be up. I think that's just gone up actually. So that's up now. This was the new book by Kyung Suk Shin, but actually it's new in the sense that it's only just been translated into English by Anton Herr and it was released I think this year 2022 but she wrote it in about 2001 so it predates Please Look After Mother and The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness and they're the two others that I've read um, and there's also Court Dancer and another one uh, well there are others as well but uh, there's one in particular that I just can't think of the name of. But so that was, uh, I sort of went into it on a false assumption because I thought, oh, this is her latest work. I wonder what she's writing about now. And in fact, it explores some of the same themes of the girl who wrote Loneliness, which is women in Seoul in South Korea, loneliness and that lack of connection. It's really uh, the difficulties moving from rural Korea into the big city um, the pressures on women and just the, like the really tough life, the poverty and the, the difficulties of that life. And this has some of those themes. It's quite slow moving. So it has San and then she moves to the city. She wants to become a writer, but she ends up working in a flower shop or a florist shop. And there are some beautiful details of how she looks after the plants and there's just the minutiae of everyday life and I, I love the way Kyung Suk Shin writes about that. There's something very calming about the tone of her writing but for me this was too slow and I didn't quite connect with it or I didn't want to keep going back to it even though I really love her writing. So I've DNF'd it, controversial, um, but this was, it felt to me as if having read some of her later work that she got better and better. I could be wrong. I'd love to know your views if you have read this or if you're a Kyung Suk Shin fan. But to me, it felt as if those later books were stronger and more distilled and tighter. And whilst it was interesting to go back to this earlier work and see the progression, I didn't feel as if I needed to finish it. Um, but let me know what you think. I don't know if, if that was just that I was expecting something different. So that was Violet by Kyung Suk Shin and that was translated by Anton Herr. And then for, well, then I got sidetracked from Women in Translation Month because I was reading North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. And that was for another book group that I'm in. And this cover, I'm not loving this cover, even though it's very resonant of the time and the place where the book is set, which is North, mainly in Northern England in a mill town, um, roughly around where Manchester is, but called, the town is called Milton in the book. But I just find this that that cover doesn't make me want to pick up the book. So I'm all for maybe they could do something funkier. Even someone suggested just even a black cover with a good font on it or something. I don't know. But I find this a little bit insipid, even though I can understand the logic. So North and South, I really loved it. So it's been described as a mashup of Jane Austen and Charles Dickens in that she has the the romance and the comedy of manners between Margaret Hale and well, there are two characters who are her suitors in the book, Henry Lennox and uh, Mr. Thornton. I've forgotten his first name. Might be John. But there's also social commentary on uh, the Labour union movement. And so there are a whole lot of people who work in the mills. And even at that time, and this is 1850s, they're starting to have lose jobs if a machine can do it faster then that means they need less people and that obviously is very a, very much a live issue today with artificial intelligence and the constantly improving technology and productivity so I found all of that really interesting and it just gives it a bit more meat 
and substance than perhaps a Jane Austen book would have had. But someone in our book group was saying, and I hadn't known this, that uh, Elizabeth Gaskell had travelled and had a slightly wider life experience than Jane Austen. So it's understandable that she's got more material to draw on for her novels. And so it's just really interesting. It had been on my radar and I had not ever read it. So I was glad to have that prompt. But it is quite long and some and, and really that's really tiny type by the way so it, it did take me a little while to read um, and so I, I got a bit sidetracked with this one but really enjoyed it and apparently the series is good that they did in oh I don't know a few years ago with Richard Armitage in it is really nice to watch I didn't get around to watching that then I did Small Things Like These, I'm just checking the title, Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan and this is indeed a small book and it's long listed for the Booker Prize. So Annie had read it and she said to me that I would like it and we're doing it on the podcast next week and I did really love this. It's a perfectly formed gem. It deserves all of the hype and all of the blurbs that are on it. It's a very simple story. Man, I think it's Mr Furlow, who's the person in, and it's 1980s Ireland, and he sells coal to all the houses in the town. And so he goes around in the lead up to Christmas delivering coal and including up to the church and the the sort of home for women next to the church or, or girls next to the church, which is a laundry. And so if you know anything about that, uh, I don't know the word to describe it, but industry is not the word, but that time in Ireland's history, which went right up until, I think the last one might have only closed in 1994, but I could be wrong, but a very long, right up into recent history, they had laundries, which the, it was a church-run business, essentially, for underprivileged women and women who were fell pregnant out of wedlock, and they were essentially worked as slaves to do the laundry for hotels and other businesses and so it's quite shocking when you read about it and what's shocking and what she beautifully brings out in a very subtle way in the book is that it was going on in plain sight and not only going on but being tacitly approved isn't the word but allowed to continue by the community because they were under the spell of the church and no one wanted wanted to rock the boat. So it's a really strong novel. As you might imagine with something that's this short, every word has its place in the book and every scene captures something and tells you something. Um, and he's just a wonderful character. He's so poignant. Uh, when you read about his childhood and his background, you really feel for him. Um, but it's done so simply and with such economy, which I really appreciate, as you know, with the prose. I don't like wordy wordy, despite loving North and South, but really I thought this was so well done. It's interesting in the Booker perspective because it's so short. How do the judges feel about it coming back to it? Does it have enough to be a book that you want to read more than once and keep going back to? Um, it has stayed with me and it's the mood and the the sense of place and the power of it, the power of the emotions that it, it brings, as in that sense of kind of complicit guilt and shame and the crisis of conscience that he has, has stayed with me. So I'll be very interested to see if it makes the shortlist. I think on quality terms, absolutely it should, but whether they're looking for something a bit longer, I don't know. It is very short, but really loved it. That's small things like these. Then I thought I'd better go back to Women in Translation. So I picked up the Old Woman with the Knife by Gu Byung Mo, translated by Chi Young Kim. Uh, and Chi Young Kim also translated Please Look After Mother by Kyung Suk Shin, which I loved. So this is another Korean novel and it's got a really fun premise of a hired assassin. So the main character is called Hornclaw. She's 65 and she's a hired assassin. I don't know if we'd say she's nearing retirement, but she's made an uncharacteristic mistake on a job. And so that's coming back to bite her. And so I love the premise. I'm finding the book good, but it is a slower pace. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a fast paced crime novel. So it's probably one of those literary crime novels where it's doing more than just, you know, it's not a whodunit or anything like that. So it's 
uh, doing more with character and place and uh, all those sorts of things. So it's a, a different pace, but I'm enjoying it. I like the quirkiness of it. I'm interested. I want to see where it's going to go. And I'm about 70 pages in. So I've got a fair, I'll give it another sort of 30 or 50 pages and decide what to do about this one. But that's The Old Woman with the Knife. And that's by Gu Byung Mo, translated by Chi Young Kim. And then I suddenly remembered that I meant to be reading Bodies of Light by Jennifer Down, which Annie had recommended to me. And this is a bit longer, as you can see. This has just won the Miles Franklin Award in Australia, which is the highest literary award for excellence in fiction with an Australian element. And it was also, I think, shortlisted for the Stella Prize, it looks like. So um, it's been really highly reviewed and awarded. And Annie has been raving about this for over a year. She first read it last year. She tipped it for the Miles Franklin very, very early. And what happened was, I, so I knew that I had to read it. And every time I saw it in the bookshop, it looked long. And I knew from what Annie had said that it's quite harrowing subject matter. And I just kind of shied away from it. And I, I resisted reading it. But I suddenly remembered that we're doing it on the podcast. And so I started it and I really like it. And I, I don't know how, it's one of those books you can't say you're enjoying because it is confronting subject matter, but it is, the narrator is so engaging and it's really deftly written. She's got a great turn of phrase. It's not overwritten, it's simple language, but it's very precise and very clean writing, which I love. Um, but the story is, it's about Maggie and she's the narrator. And we see her, it starts off when she's later in life, as in she's, a, she's an adult. And someone says, someone connects with her on Facebook and says, I think you're, what does he say? Does he say, I think you're Maggie or does he call her another name? But anyway, he calls her another name that she no longer goes by or doesn't go by. And in other words, brings up the past. And it's obviously a past that she's running away from. And then she goes back to her childhood. So you get snapshots of her life and they become as her memory gets better from when she's obviously a baby and a young child, uh, you, they become more fulsome stories. Um, and it's essentially a story about a child who's been in foster care. So she's moved from house to house and who's been abused. So there's a lot of trigger warnings, I have to say. And that sounds very dark, which is exactly why I, I had hesitated to pick it up. But it's really engaging and it sounds weird to say it, but very easy to read at the same time as sometimes some scenes are very hard to read about. It's, you know, it's very compelling and I'm in, I'm, I'm really into it. So I feel like I'm in the story. It's, it really places you there. It feels authentic. So I'm really intrigued to know how Jennifer Down has come up with this material, what, um, you know, what her research was, what inspired the book, but because it feels so real and it also has that sense of time and place. It feels, it's exactly the time that I grew up in Australia. So the narrator's the same age as, as me, essentially. So born in the 70s, growing up in the 80s. And so it's very on point. It, it all feels very accurate. Um, so I really recommend this. I don't know if it's out yet in the US or the UK, um, but do look out for it and I will update more when I've finished it. But that's Bodies of Light by Jennifer Down. So that's my reading update. Let me know what you've been reading and I will see you soon. Bye for now.